Well, welcome to Get Ready, Get Healthy. I'm your host, Doug Spangler. Well, on today's show, we're going to talk about HIV and AIDS and the important of, importance of uh, testing early, especially for men who have sex with other men. And stay with us because at the end of the show, we'll have phone numbers and websites where you can get more information. Well, the first cases of AIDS in the United States were reported in 1981. Since then, more than 1.5 million people in the United States have been infected with HIV. In Contra Costa, from the beginning of the epidemic, over 2,500 residents have been diagnosed with AIDS, and it's estimated that almost 5,000 have been infected with HIV. Although we've had successes in the treatment and prevention of the disease, many challenges remain. New HIV infections continue, especially among people of color and men who have sex with men, or MSM. MSM also continue to test late, getting an AIDS diagnosis at the, at the time of their first HIV test. Knowing you're HIV positive can prevent passing it on to someone else. You can also slow the progress, progression of HIV to AIDS and have greater treatment options by testing early. Resource centers are available throughout Contra Costa that provide confidential and rapid HIV testing, support, and more. Remember, anyone who has unprotected sex, be it with a man or a woman, is at risk of contracting HIV. And the only way to know if you've been infected with HIV is by getting tested. Well, to tell us more about HIV and AIDS, we have in our studio Dr. Anthony Jones. Dr. Jones is a family physician at Contra Costa Regional Medical Center in Martinez. He's also an HIV medicine specialist at the Pittsburgh Health Center. Welcome to the show, Dr. Jones. Good Thank to have you. you. And also with us is Carla Goad, Education and Services Supervisor for Contra Costa Health Services AIDS Program. Carla manages the HIV counseling and testing program and the prevention and community planning program there. Welcome to the show, Carla. Good to have you, you as well. Um, first of all, I'm not quite sure what the difference is between HIV and AIDS. Can, can you enlighten me on that? Sure. Well, HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Wow, AIDS, it's easy to say. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And AIDS is the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Mm -hmm. HIV is the virus that causes the condition AIDS. A person can be HIV positive without having actual AIDS, mm. which is usually used to refer to um, the situation where a person's immune system has been severely weakened due to the long-term effects of the virus on the immune system. Okay, well, how is, how, uh, I guess HIV is the sort of the beginning stage is, is in some way. Uh, how is that spread? Well, um, HIV is spread by direct contact between body fluids of a non-infected individual and an infected individual. So we talk about um, people, the most common uh, modes of transmission that we recognize in this country are through unprotected sex and then also through um, contaminated instruments, most commonly um, needles used by injection drug users. Mm. So those are the two major things. Is there anything else that, uh, that it's uh, able to be spread by? That those are the two sure. major things that the, we're seeing? There is um, the possibility of a woman who's pregnant being able to pass on HIV to her baby. Um, although at this point in time, um, medical advances, there's no reason why an HIV positive baby has to be born if the woman's getting good prenatal care. In addition, HIV can be spread through um, the breast milk. But again, knowing the mm. HIV status of the mother of the child um, is very beneficial. And again, we talked about testing before, and that's the importance of being tested at that point. So basically, bodily fluids and, um, and um, needles. Did I, did I hear you correctly? Right, through, through, through the bodily fluids of an infected individual coming into contact with that of a non-infected individual. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, uh, j uh, needles uh, used in drugs and so on. Right, so, so the, by those, carrying that fluid. That yeah, can, that okay. So, so, so the needles thing has to do with carrying fluids. Correct. Oh, I see, okay, mm -hmm. all right, okay. Who is, uh, uh, we heard some numbers and stuff I mentioned at the beginning of the show in terms of all these numbers. Who's actually being infected uh, by uh, this disease? Basically, we're, we're all affected by um, HIV and AIDS um, in our communities. In Contra Costa, um, it's about 1,800 individuals currently who are living with either HIV or AIDS. Um, and of that 1,800 folks, about 80% of them are men. 30%, um, a little more than 30% of them are African-American men, and around 50% of them are Caucasian white men. Um, when we look at mode of infection, about 
um, 50 percent of the men who are infected have said that their mode of infection is through having sex with another man and another 20 percent say that their mode of infection was through injection drug use. Hmm. Anything to add to that Dr. Jones? Well, I guess the only other part would be to say that we think that there's a significant number of people out in the community who are yet to be discovered and so um, we do our best with um, population studies and projections but um, the number is likely to be higher than our best guesses. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, one of the things I want to talk about, we talk about MSM, and is this talking about gay and bisexual uh, activity? Uh, fill me in on that. Sure. Um, not necessarily. Um, the letters MSM have been used um, as kind of a catch-all to describe uh, particular behavior, men who have sex with other men, whereas the terms gay or bisexual um, define a sexual orientation or an identity, if you will. And so someone could identify as heterosexual, meaning that a man could be attracted primarily to women or solely to women, yet at the same time have uh, sex with other men. Um, in health services, we really try to be inclusive and to allow folks that we serve to identify themselves however they see fit, what, what fits most you know, for them. Mm -hmm. Um, but to be able to provide an HIV test for them, irregardless of how they identify. So we mentioned also earlier that uh, having unprotected access with, with men or women. Mm -hmm. So what you're finding here is that there's more of this with men having sex with men. Is that the reason for uh, emphasis on, his, on this? What I had said earlier um, in, the, in the, the show was that there are about half of the infections within the men are attributed to men having sex with other men. Um, so there does appear to be more of the f infection in that community. However, it's not exclusively mm -hmm. in that community. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Um, what steps, let's talk about prevention here. What kind of steps can we uh, want to give people to prevent let's say prevent the uh, HIV and the spread of HIV and the AIDS. So where can we go with that? The biggest piece is, is being able to know your HIV status. So making mm. sure that- um, That'd be number one. Get tested, you know, find out where you can get tested. Uh, again, we have rapid testing. You can get results in, in about 20 minutes. Um, the other thing is being able to make sure that your partners are getting tested as well. So testing. Number one, we mentioned how important early testing is on that. What, what are some other ways to prevent the spread? Well, certainly um, taking precautions mm -hmm. as well. And so by an individual knowing their own status, whether they're HIV positive or negative, they can um, adjust their behaviors in order to protect, um, in the case of someone who might be positive, they may take extra precautions to keep from uh, uh, passing HIV on to other um, mm -hmm. people who may what not would, be What would some of those things be? Um, we talk about uh, using universal precautions and um, practicing safe sex, basically. Um, uh, activities that avoid the exchange of body fluids. And, um, and also, I think, by being open, um, we also talk about people who are HIV positive, they have the option of disclosing their status so that their partners will be aware. Um, and then, which may or may not affect the, uh, uh, the way that they feel about uh, mm -hmm. going forward and having sexual activity. Mm -hmm. Now, how often should one actually be tested? Is it um, once a year? I mean, what, uh, what, what, what's the recommendation? The Center for Disease Control has recommended that um, individuals test at least once in their lifetime. Mm. Um, as Dr. Jones mentioned, if someone's having unprotected sex or engaging in drug mm -hmm. use, they might want to test more frequently mm -hmm. um, and consider maybe doing something differently um, so that they are not becoming infected. And doing something differently might be using condoms or other latex barriers mm -hmm. when they're engaging in sexual behavior their injection drug user that they are getting clean syringes so they're not coming in contact with the blood of someone else who's also used that syringe. All right, well, how does somebody know that they actually have HIV? Are, are there symptoms that actually you can see and feel or wh whatever mm -hmm. in yourself? The only real way to truly know um, whether a person's affected or infected with HIV or not is to get tested really. Um, it is a virus and so when people some people are infected. They may have a syndrome, we call it retroviral syndrome, mm. 
characterized by fevers, muscle aches, things that are kind of similar to common cold and flu. And to that end, it's, it's impossible to tell whether it's HIV or, or some other illness. And mm -hmm. so the only real way to know with certainty is to get tested. Okay. Did you have something? That you got? The other thing I would add is that, you know, individuals who are um, HIV positive, making sure that they're working closely with their medical um, provider, um, that that's an additional way that they can um, take care of their health care and know exactly mm -hmm. what's the progression of, of HIV in their body. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say someone tests positive for HIV or AIDS or both. Um, what's really the treatment for something like this? The treatment has certainly come a long way during the course of the epidemic, and so um, uh, at this point we have very effective medications um, which, uh, in taken in combination, halt the activity of the virus and, and inhibit the virus from replicating or reproducing. And this allows the body's immune system to effectively rebuild itself, but this is a gradual process. And so, um, and also again, healthy living. We, we, um, People need to address any other medical conditions which may impact the course of their HIV. They need to um, try and get plenty of rest, eat a good diet, um, and avoid other behaviors that might be detrimental to their, mm -hmm. to their illness. Mm -hmm. Is there actually, uh, right now, is, uh, is there a cure for this, is, or is it just ma uh, managing the symptoms? Unfortunately, at this point, there is no cure. Okay. And so it is a long-term treatable condition, mm -hmm. like diabetes and other mm -hmm. type of conditions. Mm -hmm. And so um, we think that people are going to pretty much can pretty much expect to have a normal life expectancy when their HIV is effectively treated. Because that's an important thing. I think very early on in the whole process, we really felt like it was almost a death sentence in a sense. But it sounds like that there are some treatments that uh, a good medical uh, facility can provide to help a person actually live with uh, meaning and purpose in life. Then, absolutely, so that's an important kind of thing. Did you want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, I would just say that, you know, again, in terms of HIV testing, you know, whatever, you know, barriers or concerns that people have about taking the HIV test, um, to, to talk with those with one of our test counselors or, you know, go ahead and, and push through that fear mm -hmm. to find out your status. That mm -hmm. once you know you're HIV positive, getting into medical care and then finding out what the virus is doing in your body is really, really important. Well, that's, I guess that was really my next question was, we talked about early testing. Mm -hmm. Do, is that gonna change the treatment? Is it, is it gonna get, I don't know what's, what the answer to the question is. What, mm -hmm. what, 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 what is early testing gonna really do for the person who, who has discovered they have AIDS or HIV? Is, it, is it going to be a lesser treatment or easier or time or what is? Early testing is extremely important and it can um, confer a number of advantages to the person. That's what I'm, yeah, exactly. advantages. Maybe exactly. I couldn't sure. think of advantages. Okay. And so by, um, by testing early, um, an individual can uh, hopefully and potentially become aware of their having HIV, even in many cases prior to needing medications. And so um, they, can, can, they can partner with their healthcare provider and be followed over time and effectively plan the initiation of antiretroviral medication. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, it also allows an individual to obtain lots of uh, information and become educated and aware of, of um, their illness. Mm -hmm. if, if I hear correctly, HIV, um, if, if not unchecked, actually goes into AIDS in most cases, let's say. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that getting tested early would mean that it, we would at least stymie the situation so it doesn't really get to the extreme into the AIDS area and so forth like that. Is that, is that sound like a correct uh, kind that of thinking? Correct. So that would be one of the other reasons. Yeah. Absolutely, so it would lengthen, for many people, can lengthen that time between being HIV positive and progressing to AIDS. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, you wanna find that out. All right. There's a, a national stat that says one in four people who are HIV positive doesn't know that they're HIV positive. So again, being able to go yeah. and get tested even if you feel healthy because you won't see mm -hmm. symptoms. Mm -hmm. And it's just a regular blood test. Is that it? There's a couple of different ways that you can test. There is a blood test, which you can do through a medical provider. Mm -hmm. um, the test that the public health department here in Contra Costa offers is a rapid uh, test with an oral swab. Mm. And so there's no blood, no needles, and the results are rapid. They're available in about 20 minutes. Wow, that's pretty good. 
Well, thank you. Very interesting conversation. Appreciate you being here, Dr. Jones and Carla, thank to uh, provide us with this uh, interesting background for this. Well, testing for HIV is the only way of knowing if you're positive. And in Contra Costa, there's a mobile testing van that offers free, fast, and confidential HIV testing. Let's watch their interview. Contra Costa Health Services has a mobile testing van that offers free HIV testing on a drop-in basis. Taking an HIV test is the only way of finding out if you have the virus. And finding out at an early stage can reduce the progression from HIV to AIDS. To tell us more about the testing van and the services they offer, I'm here with Lee Wu, who's an HIV testing counselor with the AIDS program. Tell us, why is it important for people to test for HIV? It's important for everybody to get tested at least once in their lifetime, especially after having unprotected sex and sharing needles. Uh, about 25% of the infected population do not know that they're infected. So by getting tested, you'll know for sure. And you can have uh, early treatment and a better outcome living with HIV. What services are offered on the van? Is it only HIV testing? We provide hepatitis C testing. We give out condoms. We have common de condom de demonstrations. And we refer people to other uh, health services within the county. Are there different types of HIV tests? Yes, there is uh, one that you can uh, you get in the doctor's office, which they draw blood. But in the case of the van, we do an oral swab of your gums and uh, we can get your results in 20 minutes. How do people get the results? We give it to them orally and if they're out of the window period, we will then give it to them in writing. Are the tests confidential and what does that mean? Yes, the tests are very confidential. The information that we collect, is, it's only kept in the uh, health department and uh, we do not share it with anybody who makes inquiries about if you've been tested or the results. How can our viewers find your van? What are your hours and your locations? Uh, if you call the 1-800 the, the number, they will tell you where the van is located, but normally we have fixed sites at Toto Santos Park, Plaza, pardon me, uh, Home Depot, Neighborhood House, Rainbow Center, and so those various sites throughout the county. Thank you for being here with us, Lee. Thank you. Well, we want to uh, shift our focus a bit and talk about the stigma associated with HIV and AIDS. And to tell us about his experiences with HIV, we have in our studio Fred. And we are protecting his identity and uh, providing some spatial camera shots for this. So welcome to the show, Fred. Glad to have you here. Um, can you tell us how long you've been uh, uh, HIV positive? Well, Doug, a little over 18 years. Is on the record, it could have been longer. And uh, did you, uh, uh, how did you get tested? Well, a little over 18 years ago, mm -hmm. um, my long-term partner of 10 years and I uh, received a phone call that one of his ex-boyfriend's partners had died of AIDS. Mm -hmm. So then we kind of had to face reality. We didn't think we were in a monogamous relationship that anything like that would ever happen to us. But we had, the reality was that we had to uh, get tested and we did and those results were devastating. Mm. His T cells were below 200 which I guess is really not too good. Mine was well over a thousand and uh, at that point in the early 90s people, we were going to about maybe a funeral a month because we have a wide circle of friends and uh, or friends of friends and so it was a little scary, very scary to uh, kind of step forward and you know it took me 10 years to come out as being gay so then I had to it was like coming out all over again mm -hmm. to my family and friends and that was difficult and it was really scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the treatment that uh, that you were under um, made you made you come out is that? Though so before just the diagnosis to be after testing mm -hmm. I, I realized we had to because we didn't know if we were going to get sick and people I were see. dropping like sure. flies in, mm -hmm. the, in the late 80s there you know, where I worked in the bank in, in San Francisco, people would go home on the weekend and you'd hear they were dead that Monday, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't even look sick Friday before that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was kind of that fear. You didn't know how long you'd have before you got sick. So you wanted your family and your friends to know. So it kind of forced the issue mm -hmm. and had to, mm -hmm. time was really of mm -hmm. essence. Um, and why exactly did uh, you want us to protect your identity for this show? Well, first, uh, my family, my friends, and those who need to know, know. It's like my 
psychiatrist says, uh, if you go to a cocktail party, when you're in a discussion with someone, the first thing, you don't say that you have uh, herpes or you, you have cancer. Mm -hmm. So unless you're having intimate sex, you don't really need to broadcast your sexuality or your status. But uh, I just don't, the fear of being judged by people who don't really know me and mm -hmm. uh, the stigma of, I mean, I even have that, you know, back then they used to say when it, HIV AIDS was a uh, gay disease mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. when you pay, you play. But now that it's more mainstream and also a drug issue, uh, it's still a stigma. So you don't want to be associated with the drug part or the, or the bad side of it, the negative aspects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're a little, you know, it's kind of difficult. I also have been in a few movies and a few television programs uh, and my face is a to some people, maybe not you, mm -hmm. I'm a little recognizable. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the, I have a position in local government, so it could jeopardize that. It could mm -hmm. be, I'm a little scared. Okay, sure, no problem. Now, how often do you have to get treated, um, or want to get treated, oh, no, treat, I'm sorry, uh, tested? Uh, do you continue the testing, or, or how does that work for you in the last 18 years? Well, uh, 14 actually. 14, yeah. the therapy part, but the, my doctor's really good, and I, it's the same doctor I work in San Francisco mm -hmm. um, who has a very familiar, I think most people, you really need to question your doctor. You have to be your own advocate. Find out your doctor's experience with HIV cheating. Some mm -hmm. doctors aren't, and they're not comfortable with it either. Mm -hmm. I know people who have to fire their doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, my doctors, every three months I get tested to check out my levels and the activity mm -hmm. where the viral load is active and it's been you know, undetectable. But the, just the test in itself kind of is like being tested all over again to get the blood work done so that you know. And it follows everything from your eyes to, you know, cholesterol, every, all, all these things. So that, you know, once you're positive, you're positive. It's not going to go away, unfortunately. I wish I could have my insurance company understand that. Mm -hmm. But they seem to every year have to recertify, revalidate. And it's that whole stigma of that, too. You're afraid that who's looking at my records now? Who's who's knowing this, and now with these new recent uh, disclosures, uh, so many people can find out who you are and why you're testing and why you have HIV. Mm -hmm. So it's a little scary. Mm -hmm. Well, we mentioned earlier in the show about stigma, and, um, and you mentioned it as well. Um, how has the discrimination or stigma around the HIV actually um, you know, affected the testing for HIV for people who are out there? Oh, I think from your opinion, of course. Yeah, uh, just from my, I can't speak, yeah. you know, right. the community, but uh, for me and my relatives and friends, it's it's the same as any stigma. For I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I have uh, two cousins. One of them is a police officer in Milwaukee. Uh, he was, he's not gay. He's never used drugs. He uh, he was bitten by in a during an arrest by a person who tested positive for HIV. And he and his wife did not want the police officers to know in Milwaukee, so they called all the way out to California to ask me what could they do. So by, by coming out the second time as being HIV positive, I was someone that they felt confident they could talk to. They didn't want anyone back there to know. Mm -hmm. So I gave them advice. And they talked about, it. I have another cousin who's a police officer in Chicago. And he tested positive. And, he wanted me to go over his medications with my doctor in California because mm -hmm. so he didn't want people back there to know. So he's buying his meds outside of the healthcare system there because he doesn't want the people in his you know, precinct or whatever to. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this, there's a stigma still and people are still afraid. And I, it's this that we think that HIV is a used to be a gay disease mm -hmm. or a drug mm -hmm. disease or from bad, bad quote, bad activities, but mm -hmm. children, innocent children get yes. HIV, and right. it doesn't mean that they're yeah. doing something. So yeah. it's a, all these things that society, you know, places sure. on. Well, what kind of advice would you have to give people who feel fearful to actually do the HIV testing and AIDS testing and, and maybe want some more information uh, for, uh, you know, what to do? What advice would you give? Let's see. Uh, Doug, first, I probably would say that uh, today, HIV AIDS, not a death sentence. Uh, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. pretty much it was going to happen. Uh, most people did die as soon as they found out or shortly after. Mm -hmm. um, to get tested early and often is kind of what we say mm -hmm. in the, the community, get tested mm -hmm. you know, early and often. Uh, I think some people are, are afraid to find out their 
status. And also it's easier for them to say that they're not if they don't know. Mm -hmm. So some people mm -hmm. are functioning and not just in the gay community all over by not being diagnosed so they can honestly in their own mind say that they're, they're negative. So they just don't want to know. And some people just basically can't deal with it, cope with it. Mm -hmm. There's still people out there who think you can get AIDS from someone coughing or eating mm -hmm. or being around you in the air. So mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't want to have that. I know a guy, when, one of the support groups that I kind of help facilitate, his sister didn't want him to hold their baby because she thought he mm -hmm. would give the baby AIDS mm -hmm. just by mm -hmm. holding it. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. pretty so, today. So getting education is really the, yeah. one of the important and things on this. People and, need to talk about it. You yeah. talk about, you know, you don't have to have AIDS or HIV to get educated. And mm -hmm. I think that's where some people, everyone should get educated yeah. like this, this program. That's what we show is about. I was a little yeah. afraid to do this, but if it saves one life, then it's, yeah. been, it's worth it. I for appreciate me. it. Thanks for sharing, Fred. Uh, appreciate you being on the show, and we hope uh, we've educated some people. Well, the Rainbow Center of Contra Costa offers services and activities in a gay, friendly environment. Now, let's see what they had to say. I'm Victoria Valladares with Contra Costa Health Services, and I'm at the Rainbow Community Center of Contra Costa with Raul and Gordon to talk about the services they offer. Tell us about the Rainbow Community Center. The Rainbow Community Center is a 501c nonprofit community based organization that fosters a sense of community for gays, lesbians, transgenders, bisexuals, and questioning individuals. What services does the RCC offer? We have an organized program of activities for men, for uh, lesbians. We have an active youth program and an active senior program. And in addition, we have services for uh, we have a support group actually for people with HIV and AIDS. And you can find schedules and information about all of our activities on our website at www.rainbowcc.org. Does the Rainbow Center offer services for people who are living with HIV and AIDS? Yes, uh, we have the support group which meets once a week and we also partner with the Contra Costa AIDS program to provide free uh, HIV testing and we have a food bank. Uh, we partner with uh, Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano to provide groceries through the Extra Helpings Program to people with, living with HIV and AIDS. Uh, once a week we get about 20 to 25 people that come in here and we have lots of the basic necessities for them that help them get through. Okay, and you said you offer HIV testing. Is that the rapid test? That is the rapid test uh, every first and third Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, we've got that available here and it's an oral swab and you get results in about 30 minutes. Are there fees for your services? Our, our services are free but we welcome donations. We have a suggested donation of $25 for individuals, $40 for couples and families, and $20 for seniors and, adult, and our youth. But uh, we do not turn away anyone for lack of funds. Where is the Rainbow Center located and where can people get more information? The RCC is located at 3024 Willow Pass Road here in Concord. It's Willow Pass and Parkside Drive. Yeah, we're just down the street from the Concord Superior Court and we're across the street from the Civic Center. Our phone number is 925-692-0090. You can send us an email at rcc at rainbowcc.org. Website? rainbowcc.org. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Vicky. Well, we've run out of time, and we want to remind you that HIV testing is available for everyone. Staff are competent, professional, and confidential. Well, now I'm going to give you some phone numbers and websites where you can get more information. The Contra Costa AIDS program can provide you with information about HIV prevention, refer you to testing sites, and other HIV and AIDS-related services to access medical care. They can also give you dates, times, and locations for the testing van. To contact the AIDS, AIDS program, call 1-800-287-0200, 1-800-287-0200. The California HIV and AIDS hotline can provide you with information about testing sites throughout California. They can tell you where to get services for people who are HIV positive, they have information on drug programs, HIV prevention, and STD referrals. And their number is 1-800-367-2437. 1-800-367-2437. And the Contra Costa Crisis Center manages an online referral database where you can get the names, phone numbers, and locations of many service providers, including where to get HIV testing, needle exchange programs, 
legal help, and more. And that website is irissoft.com slash cccc, just like you show it here, irissoft.com cccc. Contra Costa Health Services has a website where you can get information about HIV and AIDS, how to prevent the spread of the disease, where you can go for testing, and more. That website is cchealth.org and search for HIV, cchealth.org. And we encourage you to contact us with your thoughts and comments, and we're always glad to hear from you. And our number is 925-313-6817. And so thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on Get Ready, Get Healthy. Bye-bye.